Today I want to share with you how to make homemade breadcrumbs and we're going to make two types. We're going to make toasted breadcrumbs and we're going to make fresh breadcrumbs. And then I want to give you a little tip on how to turn those fresh breadcrumbs into homemade panko breadcrumbs. Hi sweet friends! I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferments, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning about those things, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below. That'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Now to make breadcrumbs, you can certainly use a fresh loaf of bread that you've just made, or you can use fresh bread that you've just purchased. But I really like to use bread scraps to make breadcrumbs. Generally what I do is when I have different scraps of bread, the heel of a bread or maybe a couple of slices that are a day old that we're not going to eat, what I do is just cut them up and I store them in a plastic bag in a container in my freezer. And the reason I like to line my container with a plastic bag is I find that just helps decrease freezer burn. Now in a previous video that I made, I showed you how to make croutons and I'll link to that in the iCards and in the description below. And generally what I do is save different pieces of bread that are a day old, a couple of days old, or that we're not going to eat, maybe end pieces, so on and so forth. And I just put them into storage here and I pop this into my freezer. Once this package is full, then I take it out and I pick out all the pieces that I want to use to make croutons with. And generally what I like to do is to just use the inside of the bread. And the reason is I find that your best croutons are made without the crust. But then what do we do with the crust? Because you know me, I don't like, if you've been with me for a while, you know I don't like to waste anything. So I'll save all the crusts and I'll use these to make breadcrumbs. And the bread is still very soft, it's very pliable, so you can still make quote unquote fresh breadcrumbs uh, or you can toast this and we'll make toasted breadcrumbs. And I'll also use the heels uh, or the ends of different loaves of bread that I have because this can be very difficult to try to uh, scoop out any to make croutons with. It's just easier to save this to make breadcrumbs with. And as you'll see, it's still, you know, even though it was day old or a couple of day old bread, it's still, after I take it out of the freezer and let it come up to room temperature, it's still very soft and pliable. And this is a piece of baguette. Uh, whenever I have a few pieces of baguette that haven't been eaten and they're just going a little stale, I'll throw those in too. And generally I use baguette slices whole as is to make breadcrumbs. I don't use any of these to make croutons. I find it just doesn't work very well. But they make wonderful breadcrumbs. Now the first thing we'll do is make toasted breadcrumbs. Now I really think that making toasted breadcrumbs is best done with stale bread. I really don't feel it's wise to use fresh bread uh, to then dry out or stale and make breadcrumbs. I think it's a better use of just using some bread that you already have that's stale uh, or past its prime, you know, even if it's still soft, but it's, you know, a few days old and is really kind of past its prime for being eaten as fresh bread. This is wonderful bread that can be toasted and turned into toasted breadcrumbs and then nothing goes to waste. And all you'll want to do is take your bread and just cube it up and, you know, a rough chop, nothing special. And we're going to put that onto a baking sheet. And then all we're going to do is just keep cutting up our pieces of scrap bread <laughs> as I call it and sometimes you know it's not it's just sort of falling apart you can even just tear it apart with your hands and we're going to fill this tray and then we're going to put this into a 300 degree Fahrenheit oven and we're just going to dry this out and basically toast it. And I've got a bunch of different breads here because as I save bread scraps, it can be from a sourdough, a whole wheat, a rye, whatever the case may be. And I just mix them all together. It'll come out perfectly. So now into a 300 degree Fahrenheit oven to dry out. We'll check it at 15 minutes, see how it is, shake it around, let it go a little longer if they're not quite dry enough. 
But if they are, we'll take them out and we'll proceed to the next step. Well, these were in the oven for about 15 minutes. They dried out beautifully, toasted up a little, and they're nice and crisp. That's exactly what you want to look for. It's like that. Just cracks right like a cracker, nice and dry. Now I'm gonna pulverize these in a food processor, but if you don't have a food processor, no problem. You can do some in a, a high-speed blender, that may work, as well as a regular blender. You'll just want, if you're doing it in a blender, you just wanna be careful, check it a few times, make sure that it's well circulated, because you don't want the crumbs on the bottom to become more pulverized than what may be on the top, and could become like, you know, a little uneven or a little mushy, and you wanna avoid that. But if you've got a food processor just with the traditional chopping blade that it comes with, this does a great job. Now, if you don't have any kind of appliance like that, not to worry. A plastic bag and a meat pounder, put them in, give them a good uh, workout, and you'll have beautiful breadcrumbs. We'll just get these all into the food processor and send them for a whirl. Now, I'm just going to make plain breadcrumbs. If at this point you want to make seasoned breadcrumbs, maybe like Italian seasoned breadcrumbs, I like to put in my dried herbs at this point so they become nicely incorporated and pulverized with the breadcrumbs. If you prefer your seasoning uh, to look in a larger size, you know, like a dried parsley, and you don't want it pulver pulverized with your breadcrumbs, then you just add it in after the fact, after you've already pulverized these but I just find that they mix in better and make for a better flavored breadcrumb when you actually mix them in at this point. And generally the only type of flavored breadcrumb that I like to make are Italian seasoned breadcrumbs. And I just used the seasoning blend, if you were with me on the other video uh, where I made the 10 seasoning blends, I usually just throw in a little bit of my Italian seasoning. And I usually just for about this much, you know, I usually only fill the food processor about halfway up. Uh, I find that's a good amount to pulverize at one, you know, at one time. And I'll just start with usually a half a teaspoon of my Italian seasoning blend. And uh, for that video, I'll be sure to link in the I cards above and in the description below. Uh, but uh, I find that a half a teaspoon is a good starting point. After you make these once and you do decide to season them, uh, then from there on you'll know, gee, I want to add a little more seasoning or a little less seasoning. So here we go. <laughs> well, that literally took just about 20 seconds. They look beautiful. I'll put them in a bowl so that you can see them. Well, these are beautiful breadcrumbs, nice and toasted wonderful aroma. Now you can put these in an airtight jar and store them in your pantry for at least two weeks. You can also store them in your fridge if you want. Either way, they're going to stay fresh for at least two weeks. And what I like to do uh, to keep mine fresh in the pantry is when I put them in a jar to store, I love to use that little fresh saver handheld device that sucks all the oxygen out of the jar uh, to keep them nice and fresh and dry. And then each time I go to use them, when I open the jar, I just again get that little handheld food saver out and suck all the air out and put them back in my pantry. And I find that really extends the shelf life and they stay fresh a good long while. Now as to freezing these, yes, you can definitely freeze breadcrumbs. They freeze beautifully. And you can just put them in some type of Ziploc type bag, make sure you get all the air out and freeze them that way. Using some type of bag like that where you get the bulk of the air out works best at preventing uh, the breadcrumbs from developing ice crystals or freezer burn, that type of thing. And then when you get ready to use them, just take out what you need, let them come up to room temperature. They should be fine. Uh, they should defrost beautifully. They shouldn't really feel damp. They shouldn't really need any retoasting. Um, I've, I've always found them to be very, feel very much like they do feel right now once they come up to room temperature. And I've found that, you know, freezing breadcrumbs can last at least a few months in the freezer, if not longer. Now let's talk about making fresh breadcrumbs. Now, technically we're not using fresh bread, but I, I always find that a little wasteful. 
Uh, I prefer to use bread scraps that I've saved in the freezer so that's extended their life and they may have been a day old or a few days old when they went into this bag into my freezer. So as I showed you in the beginning, they're still very pliable and soft. They're not stale, you know, as a loaf of bread might be if left out on the counter. So to me, these are considered fresh breadcrumbs. And all I do is just take these different pieces of bread. It doesn't matter. I've got a mixture of sourdough and uh, whole wheat. I think it's actually a spelt bread and um, rye bread, a light rye. And I just take all the pieces and I just put them, you know, a lot of it is almost like already disintegrating a little. And I just go ahead and I'm going to fill the food processor up just halfway. You don't want to overfill because you don't want it to get gummy. And again, if you try this in a blender or a regular blender or a high speed blender, you know, be very careful. Don't overfill and stop it uh, a couple of times to make sure that it's not becoming gummy on the bottom. But a food processor works great for this. And so I'm just going to go ahead and keep adding in all these pieces and just tearing them up whenever I come across something that's a little on the larger size and then we'll send these for a whirl. And as I had shared earlier, uh, a, lot of, a lot of what's going in here are just the crusts of bread that I had cut off uh, from when I made croutons. The crusts work great. You're not going to, uh, and then I've got some baguette here, you're not going to feel that, oh gosh, it's just like crusts <laughs> made into breadcrumbs. You really you really notice no difference between whether you had used the interior of the bread or the crust. It all works great. Well, that's filled about halfway, and so now we'll send them for a whirl, and I'll show you how they look. Well, that also took maybe 20 seconds at most, and I'll take some out, and I'll show you how they look in the bowl. Well, these look wonderful, and what you're looking for is pieces that more or less are a little between uh, maybe couscous and rice and you know sort of those different different sizes like that. Uh, it's de they're definitely larger pieces than the toasted breadcrumbs which are more sand like and these are just a little mix of uh, really like basically rice size uh, gr grains <laughs> for lack of a better word and they're just gorgeous. Now Unlike the toasted breadcrumbs, I find that the fresh breadcrumbs stay fresher in the fridge. And they can stay fresh you know, for a couple of weeks, I've found, in my fridge. I find what happens if you put them in your pantry, they actually stale up. Now, that may not be the end of the world if you're wanting to maybe turn them into more like a dried or a toasted breadcrumb. But if you want to keep them more as a fresh breadcrumb, then I recommend storing them in the fridge. And as I said, they can stay fresh for a couple of weeks. And you can store them in a Ziploc plastic bag where you've pushed out a lot of the air, or if you want to put them in a jar and kind of do that food saver handheld device thing to suck out the oxygen, that works great too. And yes, you can freeze fresh breadcrumbs too. They freeze beautifully. Just put them in a bag, try to get, you know, a freezer safe bag, try to get out as much air as you can. You know, you can make it like real flat and then just uh, put it right into your freezer. And again, they'll stay fresh for at least a few months. And when you defrost them and bring them up to room temperature, they should be just like this. Now, what if you want to turn your fresh breadcrumbs into a homemade version of panko breadcrumbs? It's very easy to do. Now, technically, are they official panko breadcrumbs? No, but they're very similar. And what you'll want to do is take your baking sheet, and you can line it, line it with parchment paper if you want, and you're just going to put out your breadcrumbs like this. Basically, you're toasting your fresh breadcrumbs, but because they're larger in size, they're more similar to the panko breadcrumbs, uh, unlike the, the very fine uh, breadcrumbs that you'll find in the canisters, you know, that are sold at stores in the grocery store. This, because they're fresh and they're, you know, a larger, uh, they have like a little larger grain to them, when you toast them, they'll be very similar to the texture of the larger panko breadcrumb. 
And all you're going to want to do is just spread it out as thin as you can and then put this into a 300 degree oven just like when we dried uh, the bread to make the dried bread crumbs. You're going to want to put this in a 300 degree Fahrenheit oven and just let them dry out a little bit and toast up a little bit. It won't take long at all, maybe five minutes. Keep an eye on them. Now why would you use one type of breadcrumb over another? Now if you're making like a chicken parm, chicken parmigiana, or you're making an eggplant parmigiana, the traditional toasted breadcrumbs work very nicely for that because you just want a very thin coating, a thin crisp coating on your chicken or on your eggplant that you then saute up in your olive oil, you know, and then top with the cheese and the sauce, so on and so forth. But you just want it to be a thin tender, more or less, <laughs> that's the word I can think of. You want a thin tender coating that toasted breadcrumbs are perfect for, and especially if you've turned them into Italian seasoned breadcrumbs. Fresh breadcrumbs, on the other hand, can work really nicely if you're looking for a little bit more of a thicker, crunchier crust, almost something that mimics uh, a fried crust. So for example, you could take a boneless, skinless chicken breast, you could dip it in some egg, and then dip it into your fresh breadcrumbs, and then fry it up in a little bit of olive oil, butter, ghee, you know, whatever fat that you like to use, and it'll have a nice, uh, crispy uh, crust on it. Uh, not exactly like a fried chicken, but close. And another use for your toasted breadcrumbs uh, is a wonderful way, some of you might remember this, you know, I think it was popular in the 70s, is a shake and bake style chicken. You can take chicken that's on the bone with the skin on and shake it, you know, like in a plastic bag, uh, or just put it right into the bowl with some of your breadcrumbs, your toasted breadcrumbs, and let the breadcrumbs adhere to the skin of the chicken, of the, the chicken skin, and then bake it in your oven. And it'll get a nice crispy crust to it. And then another use for your fresh breadcrumbs is whenever you're making something where you're using like a raw chopped meat or um, a ground chicken or ground turkey and you're making a meatloaf or meatballs and it may call for some uh, bread slices, use your fresh breadcrumbs. It's, they're so much easier to work with. They mix in so much better with the milk. Uh, like if you're making a meatloaf and you're, you've got some white slices of bread, maybe you're using a sourdough and you add a little milk to let them soak. This works so much better. You just put your fresh breadcrumbs in, into your bowl, saturate them with a little bit of your milk, then go ahead and add in your chopped meat and then make your meatloaf or your um, meatballs, whatever you're making, and you will love the texture. They make a wonderful binding agent, and they're just much easier to work with than trying to rip up all the bread slices so that you don't, the, the, this is not going to create kind of those little specks of bread that, some, that can sometimes happen when you uh, are using just bread slices to make your meatloaf or your meatballs. This is already broken up and it's beautiful texture and it'll really help keep your meat together. And both work really well for topping casseroles. You can use the fresh, or you can use the toasted, uh, whichever, you know, it really will depend on what type of consistency that you're looking for on your casserole. If you want something that's very fine, obviously the toasted are going to work great. If you want something that has a little more texture, then the uh, fresh ones are going to work better. And you'll just sprinkle either or on the top of your casserole, dot it with butter, and you're all set. And both of these work beautifully for thickening soups and stews. You may see some clam chowder or fish chowder recipes that'll call for crumbled crackers. Use your breadcrumbs. It works wonderful. And I actually think that the final product of the soup or the stew is better than if you had used crumbled crackers. Well, if you'd like to learn how to make more homemade pantry items, be sure to click on this video over here where I show you how to make homemade croutons and 10 seasoning blends including Italian seasoning for your breadcrumbs. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.